Everyone, listen up. As you know, I have just bought this business and I've fired half of the workforce. For those of you that remain, you will need to learn to become hardcore, working long hours at high intensity for the sake of this business. Many Americans don't realize how bad they have it. No, you didn't. I didn't what? You haven't fired anyone. You've just started a 30-day consultation process that's required by law. Now you will have to justify why those redundancies are required for the business and satisfy regulators that you are compensating those employees appropriately. If you don't follow that process, the business will face heavy fines and your employees can claim 12 to 18 months of wages as compensation. Anyway, back to working hardcore. You guys are averaging only 38 hours per week at the moment, and that is going to have to increase dramatically to between 50 and 70 hours a week if we're going to streamline this business. Are you telling us to work long hours, or are you asking us? I am telling you. You do realize that you can get sentenced to prison time for forcing workers to work more than an average of 48 hours per week in the EU. So I'm going to assume you're asking us each individually to opt out of the European Workers Directive. So let's ask. Who here wants to opt out of the European Workers Directive and agree to work more than 48 hours a week for phony Stark here? Get space car out. Somebody get me the legal team. You fired them all yesterday. Lucky for you, they're still in their 30-day consultation period, so they still work here. So this TikTok by America is the bad place is on some level making fun of how over the top and ridiculous Elon Musk is, while at the same time pointing out the fact that the things Elon Musk is doing to Twitter right now by randomly firing people and just radically changing the structure of the company, trying to demand ridiculous amounts of hours and cutting benefits is something that would quite literally be illegal in European countries. But it just goes to show how little labor protections there are in the United States that fundamentally American workers have almost no rights in the workplace and there's so many different reasons for that that are important to understand. So let's get into why the United States has a system where people like Elon Musk can absolutely destroy people's workplaces overnight and act like dictators within their co companies, while other countries around the world have various protections for workers and guaranteed benefits and things like that that we simply don't have here. One of the major differences between the United States and Europe is the history of chattel slavery within the United States, and that the very foundation of the United States presupposed slavery's role in our economy. Now from this, there are two cultural realities that played a significant role in changing the path of the United States. First and foremost is the belief that employees are property and the dehumanization of people who are working for you. Now, quite literally under the law, under slavery, people were property, but after slavery was abolished, they developed new forms of labor like wage labor that was meant to replicate that relationship where it was expected that by paying you an hourly wage, they were renting you as a person and could dictate everything that you did, as opposed to before that with either contract labor or salaried work, where you had defined roles and tasks that you were supposed to do, and if that was done, your time was kind of your own. And the expectation always was that you'd be guaranteed enough money to survive. So the influence that slavery had on people's cultural beliefs, and specifically employers and business owners' beliefs, beliefs about how workers should be treated plays a major role even to this very day. But then there's the other layer to it, where the United States, because of our system of slavery, quite literally was stuffed with militias, with violent mobs, whose entire purpose it was, at that point, to capture slaves for the benefit of wealthy business owners. And you see, once again, after slavery was abolished, sort of technically in the United States, we still have slavery in our prison system, those militias never went away because as industrial capitalism began in the United States, the response to union workers within the United States was far more violent than it was in European countries. Quite literally, those slave-catching militias turned into union-busting militias that quite literally brought physical violence to union organizers while the state turned around to both brutalize union organizers and imprison them. So fundamentally, 
It was extreme violence that played a role in suppressing the push for labor rights within the United States. I mean, quite literally, they called in the military to try and stop coal workers from going on strike in West Virginia. But then there's another layer to this that also plays a critical role as to why European countries have adopted this social democratic model, while the United States has adopted this Reaganomics, just complete neoliberal hellscape. And that is the Soviet Union. Now, of course, there were labor movements within the United States and within Europe, but the reality is, because of their proximity to the Soviet Union and places like East Germany, where workers had an extreme amount of worker protections in the USSR and East Germany, where working hours were much shorter, where people expected to be able to do things like go to the doctor on their paid time, and people were quite literally going to the grocery store on their paid time. In fact, one of the things that people try and say about the USSR is that it was terribly inefficient, but one of those inefficiency was born of the fact that workers, for the most part, had a right to leave work whenever they wanted to, and were guaranteed a job, essentially. Which meant that people didn't have to worry or stress that much about their material needs and could work more relaxed hours. Seeing that, and seeing the increased safety standards, seeing the improved status of women, and seeing workplaces in the USSR that were fundamentally better for the workers, a lot of workers in European countries wanted that, and a lot of business owners and capitalists within those European countries were terrified of it. Because of that proximity, they thought that people would start organizing their own socialist revolutions inside of the European countries. And so out of fear for these socialist revolutions, you have these social democratic parties that claimed in the long term they would push for the same goals and efforts as the socialists, but in the short term would maintain the capitalist system. Now, obviously, those social democracies fundamentally failed beyond just setting up some basic safety nets that themselves have been actively eroded by the capitalists who keep pushing neoliberal politics. In fact, the European Union itself quite literally bans any attempt to nationalize industries because it views it as anti-competitive. So the neoliberal paradigm is kind of established within the EU. But they still have these basic safety nets that were put in place because capitalists during the time of the Soviet Union were so afraid of a socialist revolution. The United States, on the other hand, continued with its violent suppression of political opposition, and while we did have the New Deal in response to fears of socialist revolutions within the United States, the reality is, is that the New Deal was really more of an apartheid system than anything else, because the New Deal ushered in investments in suburbia and highway development and infrastructure development that was specifically crafted to get white Americans to stop showing solidarity with the struggles of marginalized people. They created the middle class, specifically for working class white folks, in an effort to try and destabilize any further movement. And then they pushed these Reaganomics politics of just rampant, ruthless privatization and the absolute destruction of any type of social safety net. So all of this really is to say that capitalism is a lot more like a dictatorship than people care to realize. And the harsh reality is when it comes to a lot of benefits within the European countries, we kind of have to thank the Soviet Union for that. Because if it wasn't for the USSR doing things like eliminating child labor, improving women's position in the workplace, and actually setting up a very rigorous set of workers' rights, then the European capitalists probably wouldn't have been as afraid of some type of socialist revolution within their own countries, and probably would have been less willing to offer those concessions. And what tiny concessions the United States itself got are also, in large part, due to the fact that the USSR was out there showing an example and actually threatened to show workers a world where they had a higher standard of living than anywhere else at the time.